Good afternoon, everyone. It's Kirsten here for my usual Thursday spa business break here on Kirsten Foss Coaching. So we've got lots of industry leaders getting on Facebook Lives this week and, you know, sharing all sorts of knowledge. Um, some of us are sharing what we know. Some of us are sharing what we know and bringing in experts. Uh, with you know as far as as far as things that we're not so familiar with um, so I'm here to uh, make sure that you know we're contributing um, to finding solutions for you guys and in a in a situation where there doesn't feel like there's a lot of solutions um, and that's what happens when we are faced with um, an emergency like this that we didn't really see coming there there's no playbook for this kind of thing yes there is such a thing as continu business continuity planning but for the spa industry um most of you guys are small business really small businesses micro businesses um i would think and so you know most most small micro businesses don't think about contingency planning until it's right here in front of you <coughs> excuse me so my family we are in isolation right now because um our youngest has uh was in japan for two for 10 days and came back on sunday so we are on a 14 day isolation and not going squirrely quite yet but you know still early <laughs> um and i'm definitely making sure that i'm booking time to have facetime coffee chats i've booked one for my with my sister tomorrow hey shannon i see you're on here i'm hoping to book a facetime coffee chat with you because i miss you a lot you've been in Mexico and um, then I was sick and now this has happened so I, I think it's really important that you know I know that you guys are probably really really busy right now as far as uh, if you are one of those facilities that is closing or has closed there's there's things that you need to do to kind of clean up business um, and so you know I, I get that it's a busy time but we also need to make sure that we are not um, just running ourselves ragged and making, um, you know, a really clear intention with ourselves to make sure we are checking in with ourselves. Um, you know, are we watching too much of the news? Are we scrolling too much on our social media feeds? Um, I personally found I have to, I, I have to make sure I'm putting, I'm looking at my, at the news at specific times and not just getting caught up in, in scrolling. Cause it feels very, very, uh, it feels overwhelming and I don't know about you, but when I start feel starting to I start feeling overwhelmed uh, my usual go-to is to uh, want to kind of just start shutting down and For me that is just not a no-go. I don't want to go there and I've been proactive and have made an appointment with my hypnotherapist uh, for this afternoon because I know that I've got some fear running um, and even though you know for the most part you know when I'm working I'm in a conscious state and I know what to do logically it's when I'm quiet and uh, have that kind of space to think that I realize that there's fear kind of wiggling its way in there and what I know for sure is that when there is fear, it absolutely starts eroding my creativity. And when my creativity is eroded, my problem solving um, capabilities become eroded. So I'm hopping on to be proactive about it. Um, I, I love the fact that, you know, uh, we're also seeing in service industries that, you know, we have to shift to online. Oh, thanks, Amy. Thanks, Amy. Um, we have to, you know, we get to shift to online and, and we have the digital capabilities. So if you are struggling kind of mental health wise, I, I invite you to reach out. There's counselors that are online that will do Skype or FaceTime um, support. Um, so, you know, even if you have to isolate or you can't go out, um, there's still options for you to make sure that you're not uh, ending up in a, you know, kind of a huddled in your bed and, and you know, wondering if the world is going to truly implode because that's not going to be helpful for you, you, your business, your family, um, and in order to be able to be resilient. And that's the whole piece about, um, you know, supporting you and your business. It's about resiliency, but it also has to do with your own self and your own ability to be resilient as well. So, you know, the situation is fluid. It keeps changing. I mean, look at a week ago. Uh, a week ago was was different. You know, there was some talk of closing, but not really. But now it's just boom, boom, boom. Lots of spas are closing. Some of them are being mandated to close. Um, hey, Cezanne. 
Uh, some of them are mandated to close. Some of some of you guys are opting to close because you realize that, you know, if we're not careful with social distancing at this point, uh, especially in some communities and areas, it's it's gonna it's gonna be really really bad for the healthcare system, um, and it, you know if if that happens, it's gonna be harder for our our economies to recover. So we have some social responsibility here. Um, however, it's really hitting the spa industry hard. We are like one of the first first kinds of businesses to really feel the hit. Now you may be this week just really busy um, think, doing things like getting ready to close. Um, so that means that if you have a team, you're gonna have to issue your ROEs in Canada. That's what it's called, record of employment. Um, thankfully, our federal government in the Canada and in the US has announced that there are special, um, special um, there's more flexibility with unemployment insurance that you don't have to wait the, the mandatory two weeks that if your spa has been closed, then your employees, you know, they get some. Um, a little bit of money, you know, not full, but it does definitely help. And I know that really helps you as a spa owner because I know it is absolutely ripping your heart apart to have to um, give these to your employees. So it's tough. It's tough all around. And, and that's why I really do appreciate hearing from a lot of you. Like we're in this together. Let's support each other. Um, you know, we can take turns having little breakdowns, um, and, and helping each other, lifting each other up. And I really, truly believe that as horrible as the situation is, it, it will shine the light on a community in a way that I don't think we have seen for decades and decades and decades, you know, maybe, you know, long enough that it's actually been more like our grandparents' generation as far as sense of community. So, you know, I'm looking on the bright side as far as what can come out of this. Um, connection, connection, like even though we can't have this personal one-on-one -on -one connection in our facilities right now, we can, we can still look at ways how to be connected with people and luckily we have the technology to do that. All right, so I wanna talk about kind of what debrief about what's happening and has been happening in the industry. So like I said, um, many spas are closing, trying to flatten the curve as far as the spike in, um, in spreading and people contracting COVID so that our healthcare systems can manage this somewhat and not just be like, uh, and not completely break it. So I applaud those of you that are being socially responsible and um, closing your facilities, especially if you're in a hotspot area. Um, some of you are like during this time, it's also oh, my husband's sending me a message. Do you want me to put some soup on? Sure, honey, <laughs> if you're watching this. Um, he's home too because we're all have to isolate. He works for the provincial government in emergency management, ironically. So uh, the other thing that you are probably doing, and if you haven't already, I encourage you to, is to communicate with your clients. So most of you have sent out emails last week even about how we are you know, how we're cleaning, how we're stepping up things, but pff, that's all out the window for a lot of, a lot of you guys. Now it's your communication is about closures. So you may want to do like a blast email blast, but maybe you have some clients that you want to reach out to personally. This is where the personal connection can be, um, can be even stronger during this time. Okay. Um, and then hopefully you guys are also doing social media updates, but please don't just rely on social media updates. Send an email to your clients, send personal messages to your clients so that they know that you, you know, that you are thinking about them because I know you are. Um, you may be also uh, preparing your finances, basically going through and looking at your fixed expenses. You know, that's your rent. Um, your payroll is your biggest expense. So I know a lot of you, as far as cash flow goes, uh, if you've let your team, um, if you've had to lay your team off, uh, then you'll still have some fixed expenses like your rent. Uh, if you're a med spa, you might have um, uh, machine like uh, technology that you are leasing, those kinds of payments. So you know, on one hand, it's horrible that you have to let go of your team, but if you don't have any, you know, if you don't have the service revenues coming in, you don't, you won't be paying your team out for that um, as far as, you know, keeping them on and paying them a salary. 
Um, and then you have your fixed or your Sawyer so variable expenses. And this is really where I urge you to go through your credit card statements, go through your bank statements and look at some of the hidden stuff that you maybe didn't realize you were paying. That sometimes comes in the form of subscriptions. Um, you know, even the little bitty Bart parts, I just went through this with my own, I've got a new bookkeeper. Uh, and he had me fill out a form of my fixed expenses and my variable expenses uh, just so that, you know, we went through it. I went through it with a fine tooth comb, making sure that, you know, there's I'm not paying for subscriptions. That I didn't realize I was paying for um, and I did find a couple of things. So, um, you know, take a look at your variable expenses. If you're if you have subscriptions you're not using, then cancel them. You know, some of your subscriptions you'll have to keep, like your booking software. Um, I just saw actually Kristen Sheen, uh, an SD, my, one of my SD besties, I saw she posted that MindBody sent out an email um, that they're not, uh, they're not, for the, for the areas that have been hit hardest with COVID, they, it's kind of on a case by case basis, but you can contact them, um, looking for relief, uh, financial aid for that. Um, but I totally understand too, if they gave their service for free, they wouldn't actually have the cash flow to support <laughs> running that business, especially for when you, uh, need it when you come back. So, but if you are hit hard in your area, if you've been forced to close down, um, then contact your booking software and see if that they can help you out there for maybe a month if and if it drags on uh, longer than that uh, all right what else have we got here uh, if you are really really cash strapped some of you have been riding the line really close as far as cash flow um, I know Daniela was getting on a Facebook live on Addo Aesthetics, I think was on that page. Uh, she had somebody who was talking about small business loans in the States. So you might want to uh, review that if you haven't seen it. And if you are in the US and, and looking for loans, I believe it's a really low interest rate to help kind of uh, bridge the gap um, for, for you right now. Um, the other option is that if you have a line of credit that you've been holding on to, you might need to dip into it. Um, also, if you have savings, I've got some savings socked away. I was really hoping, um, you know, I had my uh, uh, kind of a goal for the past couple of years uh, as far as savings. I really, really wanted a new kitchen um, and it's literally falling apart and has been for a couple of years. So, but, you know, I might need to dip into that um, if need be. So, um, you know, Sometimes the solutions aren't the solutions we want, but they're the solutions we get. <clears throat> All right. Uh, what else? Okay. The other thing that's been happening this week is I've been noticing that those spas that got on their e-commerce um, revenue stream, you know, before this happened, I'm hearing from my, my clients, my coaching clients, um, our social media clients that holy moly, their e-commerce is saving their high knees big time. So um, some of you I know are kind of doing the flight of the bumblebee and trying to get your e-commerce set up. Now this is primarily for spas that are that have skin or skincare clinics. And I know that you guys, if you have e-commerce that you will be able to ride this out. Um, I do worry about, you know, the lash businesses, um, the waxing businesses that don't have a strong retail. Um, so your, your strategy for kind of hanging in there will be savings and will be in your content marketing. Okay. I'll talk about that a little bit more. Um, the other thing that is saving these businesses that have the e-commerce is, um, a couple of them also have already set up virtual consultations for skin. Um, so those particular spas are in a pretty good place right now. I mean, it's still kind of iffy and, you know, everybody's kind of, you know, wondering what's going to happen, but they, they have been set up to kind of kick up the flow of virtual consultations and e-commerce and retail sales much easier than spas that are kind of trying to figure out how to do e-commerce on the fly right now. Um, all right, let's talk about what's next during this crisis. So this week is a lot of it is about just kind of getting, 
you know, your head is spinning, closing, to contacting clients, taking care of the team, getting that set up, closing the facility. Um, Kristen had, my friend Kristen Sheen had a great post in the Canadian Estheticians Connect about kind of a list of recommendations that she had thought about that maybe you hadn't thought about as far as getting prepped, getting your uh, space prepped to leave. Uh, one of the ones I thought was great was to take a picture of your inventory, both on retail and back bar. Um, just in case something happens, uh, in case you get broken into, um, that kind of thing. Um, and the other thing she had mentioned that I thought was a great idea was to make sure you track your, um, track your losses. So if somehow down the road you can do, you know, get any kind of financial aid or recouping, um, you need to be able to, to track actually what your losses were. All right, let's talk about what's next. So for those of you that have retail, uh, a strong retail, uh, opportunity. So you, the, those spas that have skin uh, treatment, skin services. Um, so I would definitely be recommending that once you get your closure stuff figured out that you get onto um, setting up an e-commerce site. The easiest one by far that I have heard is using Shopify. Um, so if you're looking for path of least resistance, set up a Shopify step shop and just start plugging away at it. Um, in conjunction with this is setting up virtual consult skin consultations. Um, you know, if this, if this, if you're doing this kind of on the fly and, and trying to pull it together, do yourself a favor and keep, Hey Bonnie, uh, do yourself a favor and keep the text simple. So I normally use zoom, uh, video conferencing for all my coaching and, um, that kind of thing. But sometimes it can be a bit finicky, you know, especially for people that aren't tech savvy and if they have trouble logging in and their video isn't working or their audio isn't working, it just adds a level of stress that you don't need. So if you're, if you're not familiar with using like a technology like Zoom, then default to using something like Skype or FaceTime, just keep it super simple. You could also, you know, even more simply just use Facebook. There's a video chat option in your Facebook Messenger. So that could just be super, super easy for you. Okay, what else? Um, the other part of tech with uh, virtual consultations is um, you'll need people to fill out forms. So the easiest uh, tech I would recommend if you need online forms is to use Google Forms, okay? Um, it's free, it doesn't look super pretty, but it does the job. And when we're talking about like, let's, we need to like kick things up really fast, then go with the easiest tech uh, possible. You can always upgrade down the road, but if you need to move this fast, stick with uh, really easy tech. Another, the only problem with, uh, with uh, Google Forms is that they're not HIPAA compliant. So that may be an issue for you. Uh, if you need HIPAA compliance, then I would recommend something like JotForms or Formstack. So um, take a look at those pieces of technology. They are fairly simple to use. Um, and with the HIPAA compliance, so you will have to pay for a higher level of service. All right. Make sure you are uh, adding in a virtual consultation into your online booking so people can actually book it. All right. And then the final piece as far as virtual consultations that you'll want to think about is how you're going to invoice people. So some um, some of your software does have invoicing capabilities. I know Vigero does. Um, but if not, then use Square um, or PayPal. So again, keep it, keep it simple for yourself. Do yourself a favor. You're going to have enough newness that you don't need to add, com um, complexities to your technology. Um, if you're doing virtual consultations and are able to do this, um, another way you could add value is to have a private Facebook group for only your clients. So it's an exclusive group. Um, you could have daily conversation topics come up. You could have just coffee, coffee chats, you know, um, doesn't necessarily have to talk about skin, but it could, uh, you know, we all feel so connected with our clients and I know you guys are going to really miss them. Um, this is just another way of, you know, being in service. All right. Um, and the final piece of, and the, the final option that you can create as far as generating a new revenue stream is an online course. But I do want to say this with a caveat that adds, it's, it's a bit more work. So, and 
that means that it's just going to take a little bit longer time to to create that. So I know that Robin McAlpine in um, Australia had just launched a skincare program. Uh, it's a you know it's a beautiful program, and very very few uh, skin therapists have actually created a skincare skin program. But she's put in a lot of thought. I can tell there's a lot of investment in that. So you know don't look at that and expect that you can just whip together something because you can't whip together that kind of thing. <laughs> um, it takes it takes time, uh, money, energy, and a, and a lot of strategy to 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 create that revenue stream so that it's um, it's long it's a long term revenue stream for you. All right, so, <clears throat> excuse me, the next heading I want to talk about is, should you be marketing right now? So I did an extra Facebook Live on Tuesday talking a bit about this. So if you missed it, head back to that Facebook Live on Tuesday. The short version is yes, you should still be marketing, okay? But you, want, you have to change up your strategy if you're closed, you don't you don't have any services to sell. So of course you have to change your strategy. So that means that your content strategy or that your your marketing strategy shifts into primarily being a content strategy. Hey Elizabeth. Um, and what that means as far as content strategy, that means that you are providing content as a means of marketing yourself. So this is a piece of content marketing. Writing a blog is a piece of content marketing. Sending out uh, an email with um, skin tips and um, you know information and education about maybe an ingredient, that's content marketing. It's providing value in the form of content. And it's ideal in the situation because you don't, if you're closed and you can't do virtual consultations and you can't, don't have an e-commerce, then that's really what you have as far as a commodity. It's your creativity and your effort and your, um, your, your desire to serve and be connected to your community. Okay. So that is your currency right now. So use it. All right. So I have some ideas for content strategy. Um, and it primarily, um, <laughs> it primarily has to do with using video because that is going to be how you can, your clients and your followers are going to be able to feel more connected with you is through video. So if you've been putting off video, <laughs> now's the time you may as well. Okay. So, um, a couple of things that I've been seeing happen already is I, I've, I've seen, uh, one of the gals, I think she's in the States. I think she's a solo SD. She had a virtual facial, um, and she was selling, um, like little facial kits. Like, so she, she prepped her followers for this, um, probably via email and most likely through social media as well. But she's, she's, she's selling these little facial kits and then she does the facial in a Facebook Live so people can follow. So it's kind of like a tutorial, but it's more connected and people can hop on and do it all at the same time. It's brilliant. And I highly recommend that you start thinking about something like that and how that what, what that would look like for your um for your social media so whether you do an igtv or whether you do facebook live i really encourage you to do something like that um another uh, idea is to share with your community how you're spending your time social distancing be part of the solution <laughs> okay and when we share how we're handling things that's 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 being a leader in your community. But when you are sharing, this is how our family is handling uh, social, social isolation. Um, you know, it's not necessarily about skin. It's not about spa. It's not about lashes, but it's about people. Okay. So this is what, again, this is what the situation is stripping uh, things right down to is human connection and people and getting rid of all the extra garbage, the stuff, the selling, right? So, um, when you are sharing how you are spending your self-isolation, maybe your followers and your clients don't know something about you that you have something cool to offer. So I know um, Mike, he, he, I can't remember his last name, Turpin, he's in Texas and I think it might've just been on his personal page, but he offered like, hey, I'm gonna do some cooking demonstrations. Do you wanna watch? That's awesome kind of content for your Facebook page. Your clients, I'm sure, are super curious. You know how to cook? 
What do you know how to cook? Show me something. Um, maybe you um, are a yoga instructor. Um, Amy was on here earlier. She earlier in the week she was offering uh, spa owners and estheticians, you know, yoga uh, exercises to help us with our ergonomics. So I would recommend Amy that you do some Facebook lives on your page for your clients about, hey, let's do a little yoga class here. Follow along. All right. Same thing with homeschooling. Um, by the way, if you have to homeschool, um, Tina, Al, I can't remember how to pronounce her name, Alberto, um, she has, her business is the ugly, the ugly business of beauty. Um, anyway, she put together a fantastic resource for her followers. Um, I shared it to my page here and it's about, it's all her resources because she homeschools her five kids. Uh, I, I, I don't know. I don't, I guess I would if I had to, but I, you know, I applaud her, <laughs> but she, you know, it has nothing to do with spa, but she recognized that spa owners are, are going to be in a pickle and don't know how to homeschool their kids and could really use some, some great tips on that. So maybe you homeschool your kids and I'm sure your community would love some ideas about how you handle that. Um, same with fitness. If any of you guys are fitness instructors or, you know, quiet fitness, you know, you, you, you know, you don't really talk about it a lot, but maybe you hold a little fitness class on a Facebook live or IGTV. There's all sorts of ideas. And here's the thing. Necessity is the mother of invention, right? So when we, when we're, when we can't do what we normally do, it forces us to think about, well, what can I do? Right? Okay. Well, let me get my notes back on here. Uh, I had things all mixed up here. So the other thing I wanted to talk about was I had a whole bunch of pages and they kind of all, they they overflowed on my um, printer. So that's okay. Um, so the other thing, the last he heading I wanted to talk about, the last point I want to talk about is once you the dust has settled a bit. So it, maybe it's not this week. Maybe it's next week. Maybe next week is still too crazy for you. Maybe it's the week after, but at some point you are going to have some time. Um, and that is when you want to look and do a bit of an analysis on your business. Um, Tara Zerker um, did a really great uh, Facebook Live. I don't know whether it's today, earlier today, or if it was yesterday, but she was mentioning that this is, you know, this kind of forced isolation and slowness has can, kind of forced us to you know, maybe look at our business a little bit differently. Are you happy with your the way that your business is? Are you happy in this industry still? This is an opportunity to really shake up and ask those kinds of questions. If you're not happy in this industry anymore, maybe it's time for a career change. Maybe this was just the kick in the pants. Um, and that's okay to have a career change. Um, you know, maybe there's parts of your business that you just realize you really hate. <laughs> um, maybe it is, you know, you don't want to be manage people and lead people. Maybe it's that you feel a calling come up to you even stronger. So this is what, um, you know, I, I think that you will also want to do is when you have some downtime is do a little bit of a debrief. Do I still love what I'm doing? Um, and do I still want to continue doing what I'm doing and how do I want to serve in a different way? Taking, you know, that's big picture stuff. Then you're going to want to look at the different categories in your business about, you know, people, clients, staff, operations, marketing, you know, with each of those, what's working, what's not. And when you have some downtime, you've got a little bit of an opportunity to start problem solving or implementing some things. So for those of you that have teams and you've been complaining that your teams are kind of a gong show and not, you know, no, they're not all on the same bus <laughs> rolling down the same street. I suspect that you need a staff handbook and an operations manual. This is the time to do that kind of work. All right. But make sure that you're, you know, get your ducks in a row right now, clean up what you need to clean up. Um, and then when you are ready to have a little bit of downtime, it's time to do some business analysis to look at what works, what doesn't, and what kind of changes that you do want to make. So, you know, when this all plays out, 
it'll be really interesting because although, you know, a lot of us are choosing to uh, close our businesses for a couple of weeks, we don't know what's going to happen in a week or two weeks or three weeks. We don't know how long this is going to last. But what I do know is that as entrepreneurs, we have to learn to be resilient. We have to know that part of our being needs to be nimble because you guys all know this already if you've been entrepreneurs for a while. Things change all the time. This just happens to be a very, very fast and very impactful change. So, um, you know, I guess it really just reminds us that, you know, we need to, uh, we, can, we can only control so much. We do what we can, but we need to stay nimble in order to be able to pivot. All right. Because we're, we, we're going to have to keep pivoting here. We don't know how we're going to have to do that, but we're going to have to. So part of the, um, was Elizabeth says, totally true. Let's see craziness as an opportunity to reinvent ourselves and the business. Absolutely. That does really excite me. And I was saying on Tuesday that what really excites me is that when we have a lot of this stuff stripped away, it forces us to create new habits, create new ways of doing things, create new systems. We already are seeing this. Um, in our a little bit in our industry, you know, as far as creative ways to um, continue to earn revenues, but we're seeing this big time um, in the medical um, side of things. So it's going to be super exciting to see how this all unravels, but also to keep ourselves calm and to know that this isn't going to last forever. It is a bit of a downturn, but if we can keep a resilient mindset. Um, we can bounce back from this. It's, it might just take a little bit of clawing out of it, but I know that there's a lot of support here on social media. Um, there's a lot of us, like there's Daniela and there's Maxine, and I know, um, uh, who else, who was, um, I'm blanking on my names now. Stephanie Lanes was getting on a, a Facebook Live with um, Maxine. Um, then we've got Shannon from um, her, with her sugaring business. So there's all, we're all here for you. And some of this information will be the same. Some of it will be new and different, but do know that we are all here for you as mentors to help pull you through this. So you are not alone. Absolutely not alone. Cause sometimes that, that piece feeling alone can really tank our mental health. You are not alone. All right. Thank you for joining me. I'll continue to um, share updates and knowledge as it comes to me. Um, I'm looking forward to my hypnotherapy session this afternoon to, you know, do a little work on the subconscious mind and soothe that, that subconscious mind. I call them my monkeys, my little monkeys, because um, that's how they kind of appear to me visually. And um, they're, they're a little upset and they're a little worried and they're trying not to be worried, but um, I really want to be proactive in how I'm dealing with my own stress and concerns about this industry um, so that I'm not tanking my creativity because I know that you guys will need me. Um, anyways, that's it for now. That was a really long Facebook Live. Thank you so much for sharing. Um, I'm absolutely honored to be support for you. Thanks, uh, Elizabeth. And uh, if you have any questions, please feel free to comment in here. Send me a DM um, and let me know how I can help. Take care, stay healthy, and love to you all.